Welcome, 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 welcome to Better Than Ever Live, wherever you're watching, wherever you're listening, hope you're making today your masterpiece. In this video, we're gonna talk about the role of sleep in athletic performance, how not getting enough sleep could hurt your exercise, hurt your performance in games and competitions and ways to improve. My name is Dr. David Geyer, double board certified orthopedic surgeon, sports medicine specialist, and media medical expert. I help you feel and perform your best regardless of age, injury, or medical condition. As always, please understand in this video, I'm not giving you specific medical advice. This is meant for general information and educational purposes only. Now, I apologize. I tried to do this Tuesday. We had some technical issues, so we're gonna to try to repeat the same topic. But as always, if you have comments, questions about sleep, sports, training performance, and lack of sleep, anything we talk about in this live stream, please leave it in the chat. I'd love for you to give your first name and where you're located along with your question, or if you have medical questions, I will try to answer those at the end of this discussion. But like the rest of the population, athletes very, very often struggle with sleep. It might be not getting enough sleep. It might be low sleep quality. It might be tr not trying to get enough sleep. It might be travel issues or scheduling constraints. Maybe the athlete doesn't put much of a priority on sleep relative to other training. Maybe he or she or you don't realize the role that sleep plays in optimizing athletic performance. So that's what we're gonna try to clear up in this video. Now studies have shown that elite athletes get less total sleep than non-athletes. And this pattern really holds true in many different sports, in both team and in individual sports, sports that require strength, sports that require speed, those that require endurance. Doesn't seem to matter. One study reported that Olympic athletes sleep on average between about six and a half and 6.8 hours a night. But they also have longer sleep latencies or an increase in the time it takes to fall asleep. They often have lower quality of sleep compared to non-athletes as well. So both for athletes and for the rest of us, a lack of sleep is bad for our health. Most adults require somewhere between seven and nine hours of sleep a night. Now I know there are people out there that say they only need four or five hours a night, but there are truly very few of those people. If you hear somebody say that, have them do it for two weeks with no ca caffeine. You'll find out really fast there are very few people that can live on just four or five hours of sleep a night. Most sleep experts actually believe athletes need even more sleep, more than the seven to nine hours because they're, at, they're training and exercise. Now, not getting enough sleep has a lot of bad health effects. People who are sleep deprived have impaired brain and cognitive function that affects judgment and decision making, not just during sports, but in our daily lives. On a metabolic basis, a lack of sleep has been associated with obesity and diabetes. Because on one hand, you have people who lack sleep that crave and choose unhealthy foods more often. But it also leads to altered glucose sensitivity. Not getting enough sleep affects growth hormone secretion, cortisol secretion, pro-inflammatory cytokines, all of which hurt the immune system and slow your recovery from muscle damage after workouts. It causes slower and less accurate cognitive performance. It interferes with your perception of pain, all caused by poor sleep and all are relevant to your athletic performance, whether you're an elite athlete or you just like to train your best unrelated to competitions. Now we've touched on some areas negatively affected by insufficient sleep, speed, endurance, brain, cognitive function, memory, attention, weight control, recovery from illness and injury, but let's look a little more specifically. Let's dive a little deeper. Here are just some of the performance metrics that have been studied in athletes that are negatively affected by a lack of sleep. And again, there's scientific evidence of all of these. It hurts power, it hurts endurance, decreased running performance, decreased muscle glycogen, which you need for energy to train and compete, reduced strength, decreased skill and accuracy kicking a soccer ball, decreased accuracy with tennis serves, worse time to exhaustion, worse feelings of energy and enthusiasm during your training, worse reaction times, worse judgment, worse decision making. And in some of these studies, the effects came on after only two to four hours less sleep in one night. Now, one of the classic studies of the effects of sleep for athletes was performed just a few years ago in college basketball with the Stanford men's basketball team. Researchers studied 11 members of the team. Each of the 11 members stayed at their normal level of sleep for two to four weeks to get baseline metrics on all sorts of things, including basketball metrics. And then they started a five to seven week 
sleep extension period. The players were instructed to get as much sleep as possible, but the goal was to stay in bed at least 10 hours every night. And on average, they got 110 minutes more sleep each night, almost two hours extra sleep. But it had so many benefits. Their sprints were faster. Their shooting accuracy went up. Their free throw percentage went up. Their three-point percentage went up. Both went up more than 9%. They had less feelings that they were working hard. They had less fatigue, and they had improved overall ratings of physical and mental well-being during practices and games. Basically, more sleep improved not only their basketball performance, but their overall athletic performance. Now, there's a related concept when we talk about sleep and athletic performance, and it concerns timing of competition. Athletic performance seems to be best in the evening, around the time when your core body temperature is at its peak. But many competitions, like road races, are held very early in the morning. Since sleep loss is a common occurrence prior to competition in most athletes, and we tend to perform better athletically late in the day, both the time and the lack of sleep can significantly affect your sports and exercise performance. Now, it's important to understand one fact about scientific research on sleep, whether you're an athlete or not. We are really bad at estimating our sleep, both in terms of how much we sleep and the quality. It's really important to measure your sleep, not just how long, but phases of sleep like deep sleep, REM sleep, latency, how long it takes to fall asleep, and much more. You've heard what gets measured gets managed from Peter Drucker. Well, you can't really start improving your sleep without actually knowing what's going on. It doesn't have to be the aura ring like I wear. There are smartphone apps and other weather devices that can help. Now, now that we understand sleep's vital to our physical and mental and overall athletic performance, let's talk about a few steps to improve it. And when we talk about improving sleep, it's not just getting more hours in bed asleep, it's improving our sleep quality too. First, when you go to bed, when you wake up, try to go to bed and wake up at the same time every night and every morning. It gets your body and mind into a state of feeling like it's time to go to sleep, making it easier to fall asleep. It also makes it easier to wake up the next morning, especially if you keep the same wake time on weekends and holidays. Not easy to do, but it's worth it. All right, and then as far as going to bed, you wanna perform some type of bedtime ritual that helps you fall asleep. Maybe you take a warm shower or bath. Maybe you read a book for 15 minutes. Maybe you meditate. Try doing the same ritual every night. Naps, this is a big topic in the sleep world. If you do have a night of insufficient sleep, a 30 or 60 minute nap, the next day can restore some of what you lost. But you wanna to try to avoid naps after 3 p.m. because it could interfere with your ability to fall asleep later. As far as activities in bed, use your bed for sleep and intimate moments only. Don't read in bed, don't watch TV, don't play on your phone or anything else. You want your brain to recognize it's time to fall asleep when you're in bed. Another hot topic is blue light. Try to avoid watching TV, using your computer, phone, tablets, 60 minutes before you go to bed. Blue light negatively affects melatonin production, making it harder to fall asleep. Plus video games and social media provide stimulation through their content, also making it harder to fall asleep. One that I really love, create a bedroom cave. Make your bedroom as dark as possible, as quiet as possible, and as cool as possible. Helps the quality of your sleep. As far as what to eat, eat carbs at night. If you're going to eat carbs, eat them at night. High glycemic index carbs make it easier to fall asleep. Eating protein might actually do the same thing, but avoid foods high in fat that make it harder to fall asleep. Avoid caffeine. If you drink coffee or other caffeinated beverages, drink them in the morning. Limit yourself to no more than two cups of coffee if possible. Don't drink any caffeinated drink after noon. And here's one I know people won't like, avoid alcohol. Despite the misconception that alcohol helps people sleep, it interferes with the overall quality of sleep. If you're going to have one or two drinks, drink water after the alcohol and try to have the drink earlier in the day. And as far as training goes, avoid late night training. If possible, perform any intense physical exercise, athletic performance, or competition at least three hours before bedtime to avoid a cortisol surge that can keep you awake. One problem I have, I would strongly recommend avoiding drinking a lot of water late in the day and at night. If you drink a lot of water, you might wake up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, which hurts the quality and duration of your sleep. First thing in the morning, try to get sunlight. Try to get natural sunlight as soon as you wake up or use some of these lamps that replicate the natural spectrum of sunlight. Avoid hitting the snooze button. This is one all my friends do. Do everything you can to avoid hitting snooze and going back to bed. You won't feel any more rested 
and you'll miss out on valuable parts of the day. As far as supplements go, I'm huge on supplements, but there are a few that might help. Try oral or topical as a cream magnesium, maybe foods with natural melatonin like tart cherries and cherry juice. And last is this concept of banking sleep. If you know you're gonna have a night of coming up where you're not gonna get enough sleep, there are sleep experts that believe you can take an extra nap or two or sleep longer the night before to provide a buffer and counter the effects of the lost sleep coming up. Bottom line, sleep deprivation is negatively associated with athletic performance. Sleep extension seems to improve performance. Do what you can to get more sleep, get better quality of sleep. Your body, your health, and your athletic performance will thank you for it. So that is my sort of two cents on sleep. Pramod says hi. You know, sleep is one of those things for me that it's tricky because we're all busy. We've got work commitments, we've got family commitments, and now we've got all these distractions with our phones and, and texting and social media and everything else. It is really hard to make sure you get sleep and it really takes commitment. And, and friends of mine that are close to me will tell you, I've really had to work on mine. I have been there where I went over two years sleeping about four to four and a half, maybe five hours of sleep a night. It is not good for you. And it was. It took me a long time to get out of that, getting to six hours of sleep a night, getting to seven hours. And now I get about seven and a half hours of sleep a night. And I track it with my aura ring. I can tell you how much deep sleep I get every night, how much REM sleep, how long it takes to fall asleep. And you know, I've done a lot of what I just said. Try to go to bed at the same time every night. Try to wake up the same time every night. I have a bedroom cave. I really don't drink caffeine after about 9 a.m. Uh, you know, rarely drink alcohol. That's not just for sleep, that's for all kinds of reasons. Uh, it takes a lot of work, but I will tell you whether or not you're an athlete, it makes an enormous difference. Even ignoring health for a second makes an enormous, enormous difference from how, for how you feel. And, and that's going to translate into the gym or into your runs or into your games and, and other competitions. But just getting more work done and being happier in your daily life, you will very, very much appreciate getting more sleep on a regular basis. My thoughts for whatever that's worth. If you have any other comments, please let me know what those would be. Now, if you'd like to read the studies I mentioned in this video, I've provided links in the description below so you can check those out. If you like videos like this, you want more information on optimal health and wellness, healing and recovery from orthopedic injuries so that you can feel and perform your best regardless of age, injury, or medical history, subscribe to this channel. Click the bell to be notified of new videos and live streams when I do. And if you have a musculoskeletal injury and you wanna see somebody who truly knows about bone and joint injuries in athletes and active people, I am here to help. I'd be happy to help. I'm a double board certified orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine specialist. I'd love to talk to you about all your options to recover from your injury, not just surgery, cortisone shots, and physical therapy. Go to my website, drdavidgeyer.com. Go to the contact page in the upper right corner of the page. You can make an appointment to see me. The link to my website and the contact information is also in the description below this video. My name, again, is Dr. David Geyer. Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to helping you feel and perform better than ever. All right, and Akash got me right as we were closing. Six months after an ACL reconstruction, can I jump now, long jump? So normally, yes, most people by six months can uh, jump, do plyometrics at six months, but the, the amount of time out from surgery is not really what determines that. It's do you have, is the ligament stable? Do you have full motion? Have you gotten your strength back? Uh, and there are ways to test that in physical therapy. From about four and a half months on, there is sports specific training that people can do to test that out before you try it full out and risk re-injuring it. So that's how, at least when I work with athletes, I have them go through a sports specific training program to get them ready to see if they can do whatever it is in that sport, whether it's soccer, whether it's basketball, track and field, doesn't really matter. So usually by six months, yes, but it depends on the individual athlete. All right, thank you so much. I hope you guys enjoyed this take two version of the live stream talking about the role of sleep and athletic performance. We'll be right back here Tuesday. We've got one that we're gonna do on hyperbaric oxygen. We got one that we're gonna do on a new, sort of a newer treatment for osteoarthritis. That should be a lot of fun. So look forward to seeing you. Tuesday, 12 p.m. Eastern Time. And if you do have 
uh, bone and joint injuries. I will. I plan to be here tomorrow on Friday at noon Eastern time. Uh, so join me for Ask Dr. Geyer. Thank you so much, and I will see you very soon. Take care.